The story you are about to see was inspired by actual events. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was Monday. It was overcast in Los Angeles. My partner and I were working the day shift out of robbery homicide. The captain was Ruth Hagerman. Parks and Recreation received an AM complaint about excessive noise, coyotes. Kind of odd. There had to be some reason for them to be out in broad daylight. We smelled the reason before we could see it. A white Jane Doe decomposing. Cause of death unknown. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. Start canvassing the homes around the edge of the park. See if anybody saw anything suspicious within the last, uh, what, what's the TOD? Black blowfly with first and second stage in star larva. Given the weather, I say they've been feeding on it for at least 55 hours. Two, three days max. Late 20s, early 30s. So what, dumped it top, rolled down here? Yeah, maybe your coyotes dragged her down. Can you even get a print off of her? I can try. Hey, Richard. This could give you one. Maybe a name if you're lucky. She deserves better than Jane Doe. smaller hand. He does the women. Mm. You. Now, if this doesn't yield an ID, we'll start on DNA, okay, dental records. Up. Looks to me like you got a clean print there. Oh, let's just hope she's been arrested. It turned out Rose Wexler had been arrested. In 1999, she was booked for solicitation. A year later, solicitation and possession of narcotics. Both times while trolling Hollywood Boulevard between Vermont and Vine, LA's unofficial red light district. Hello, Cleo. Officer Frank Smith. Looking good. Yeah, long time no see. This is my partner, Detective Friday. Robbery and homicide. No more vice. Relax. Detective. Cleo. So what are two big-time RHD cops doing down in our little neck of the woods? We're looking for some information on Rose Wexler. Rosie, what'd she do now? She got herself killed. Oh. You don't look surprised. Surprised, I don't get. Seen it all and then some. Elvis strolls up and wants a slice of hot apple pie. I don't blink an eye. So, Rose? She worked for the Russian. At least she did last week. A lot of turnover in this business, you know what I mean? I must have seen a thousand of these girls come and go. Only problem with buttering up a working girl like Cleo is once you get her started, you can't turn her off. However, we did learn that Rose Wexler was having labor disputes with her current employer, a pimp named Victor Teneshuli. Gentlemen, dobry vecher, cocktila. Oh, gee, let me guess, LAPD. You're the man, Vic. One killing and suddenly LAPD is so concerned about welfare of working girls. Well, you know what they say, a million deaths are a statistic, one's a tragedy. Stalin, can't get nothing by this guy. Is it true what they say about the labor dispute? Said where it is. Just before her untimely death, Rose Wexler wanted away from you. Word is lie. I'm a businessman. Rose and I were in um, negotiations. Well, being a businessman, you got to keep your employees in line. Yeah, maybe you were teaching her a lesson. Slapped her around, maybe slapped her too hard. Dumped her body up in the hills. <laughs> so now you have me killing this crazy bitch? Listen, I was giving her pink slip. Huh? She was a fin, maniac. She goes with anybody. Osama Bin Laden, if he gives her heroin. Well, you care as long as you get your cut. She made me money from what she's putting between her legs, not what she's putting in her arm. 
tell me when she dies, I tell you where I was. Tuesday night, 11 to 4. I was here. Was I not? Amazing recall. Like they didn't even have to think about it. Well, thinking's not Vic's strong point. Not. Son of a bitch. Das be done. Das be done, yeah. Bruising from ligature marks here, her wrists, and most likely her neck. Rope? Possible, but uh, there are no fibers in evidence. Was the body scrubbed? No, well, it's too much decomposition. Cause of death? Well, coyotes took most of the esophagus, but given a broken hyoid bone, I'd say strangulation. Rape? Well, we found traces of semen around the vagina and anus, but given her choice of profession, that may or may not be of any help. Semen on the outside of the vagina and anus, not inside? It appears that way, but uh, so much decomposition, animal insect activity, it's hard to be 100% certain. Now, there is another thing, quite unusual. Inside her, we found traces of paint. Paint? Looks like silver. Given the propellant mixed with the acrylic, I'd say it came from a can of spray paint. Okay. But again, okay, this didn't leave much of a sample. A couple of kids out party and found another body. Woman, 20s, naked. The station detectives say she might have been freshly dumped. Call Guzman. Maybe we need the same pair of eyes on this. Mulholland Drive at night. The best view in LA. Unless you're dead. Petechial hemorrhaging. Strangulation. Five point ligature marks. She was tied at the ankles, wrists, and neck. What about rape? There doesn't appear to be any semen inside, but look. Silver spray paint. Sanjay found it inside the other victim as well. So maybe we got a cereal in the making? Semen on the outside? Take a look. You thinking what I'm thinking? Premature ejaculation. We got a squirter. Body was dumped here four or five hours ago. Maybe killed an hour before that. 10.30. One more thing, she was lactating. Pregnant? Breastfeeding. Prince off the second victim belonged to Deborah Gascon, 25. One prior last year for solicitation, served 30 days. Nothing since. Yes? I'm Detective Smith. This is Detective Friday. We're with LAPD. Where's Debbie? Who are you? Marsha Hills, Debbie. We live together. What happened? May we come in? Is this your little boy? Mikey. This is Kyle, Debbie's baby. You might want to let Mikey go in the other room or something. Why? Mikey, go to the bedroom, okay? Thank you. What happened? Deborah was murdered. How? That's what we're here to figure out. When was the last time that you saw her? Last night. She left at 10. Normally, she's back by three to feed Kyle. We traded off. One of us works, the other watches the kids. So you two were in the same line of work? How did she die? We assume someone picked her up on the boulevard. Maybe you'd know where. Well, Winona and Vanessa, those were our blocks. And was there someone taking a cut? Teddy Mars was our pimp. Any trouble on that front? We did our thing. He was supposed to do his. The son of a bitch was supposed to protect her. We were just saving up. Look, we were gonna get the hell out of L.A. We were going to Asheville, North Carolina. It's all we ever talk about. Debbie, have any enemies? Anyone who might want to hurt her? We kept to ourselves. Debbie was a great mom. I can see that. And what about the father? Or was there a guy that... He wasn't into guys, except for the money. She wanted me to take Kyle if anything happened to her. She's got a family up in Olympia. They're freaks, bad, bad people. You cannot let them take Kyle up there. He's all I got left of Debbie. It's not our call, Marsha. 
But we were gonna raise Mikey and Kyle together, like brothers. I'm sorry. Believe me, I am. We're thinking Rose Wexler was abducted from the corner of Las Palmas in Hollywood. And we're thinking that Deborah Gascon was abducted anywhere between Winona and Van Ness. Anything from the canvas? We talked to working girls, pedestrians, pimps, Johns, nothing. What about their pimps? Well, Rose's was Victor Tennis Shoot. And he said that he was at a shoe shine stand on Hollywood Boulevard all Thursday night. Ten of his comrades claim the same. Deborah's pimp was at his corporate headquarters. He's got witnesses to put him there. So all we have is an MO. Five point ligature marks, strangulation. Well, we know from his semen our guy's A positive. And there's the calling card. Yeah, the spray paint. What is that about? Well, our guy wants attention, right? It's my guess he'll keep killing till he gets it. Why don't you go home? Oh, you go ahead. You look beat. Yeah. Can't even think of sleep right now. Can or won't? You ever get a decomp with your advice? Yeah, sure. No, not like her. You get used to it. You're gonna get that? Spit in the pickup truck, her two shots around 11. Called it in. We're getting our statements now. Lutray leads into the scrub. Let's get a barrier up, keep the media maggots out of our face. With pleasure. Woman took a bullet to the chest. Rigger hasn't set in. I'd estimate she's been dead less than an hour. 380, shell casing, spatter, and that bullet hole. Through and through, from this angle. Looks like our victim fired a round through the killer's abdomen. Yeah. Depending on where she hit him, he could have crawled a long way. Get the dogs. We gotta get this guy now. The third victim having shot her attacker had put us in the 19th century instead of the 21st. Dogs following a blood trail. Dawn came. Still no scent. Cassie had turned 21 last month. Yeah. She parties a lot. Goes to raves. Went to Burning Man out in the desert. So you're thinking she could have been in that car. What are you gonna do, buy your sister a gun? She'd blow her foot off. No, it's just that she's reckless. And with these random killings. Random, I got a problem with random. But you see a connection between the three Vicks? Well, between Wexler and Gascon, no doubt. The woman in the car, no. No, I don't see a connection. Hey, hey. Right down there, come on, let's go! He's lost a lot of blood. Don't let him die. You hear me? Keep that son of a bitch alive. We got his rap sheet off the driver's license you pulled. Thank you, Christopher Brule, 31, two priors, both for sexual assault. Three years at Folsom, parole December 31st. Dates fit. Yeah. Captain? Joe, this is Dr. Louise Nottingham. She's here to help us establish a profile. I read some stuff you wrote on criminal disassociative behavior when you were with the FBI. Pretty impressive stuff. Thank you. Take a look. Satanic iconography, deviant pornography. It's the right fit. Detectives, check this out. You might want to get those to the lab ASAP, see if you can get a match on fibers from the victims. There were no uh, fibers on the last two victims. No prints, scrub clean. Seems our guy's a perfectionist. He'd be a neat freak, at least where he lives. Any trace of silver spray paint? Still looking. 
We got a wide cross-section of prints, though. This guy definitely entertained. The previous two murders, we figured that the suspect picked prostitutes, tried to lure him into his car. According to the sheet, his last victim, Joanne Sims, she was a dialysis technician. Well, she was also working part-time at L.A. Adult Video. 4723 Citrus. It's right up the street. Chokers. Apparently, Mr. Boulay was into erotic asphyxiation. Fits with the strangulation. And the sexual dysfunction. I don't see our man using a gun. Perhaps, as you said, because Brule couldn't lure Ms. Sims into his car, he had to resort to force. Use a gun. Maybe our killer's still at large. Detective, come on. Brule was a loner in his 30s, a woman hater, ashamed of his sexual dysfunction. Compelled to remove the reminder of that by robbing his victims of the ability to speak and breathe. Yeah, I, I get the profile. But I still think the only way for certain to tell if Brule's our killer is to match his DNA with that we found on Wexler and Gascon. We're weeks away from that analysis. Captain, we just got a call from County USC. Brule just died on the table two minutes ago. I suggest we at least present an opinion, let the public draw their own conclusion, and quite possibly put some women's minds at ease. Well, if you're wrong, guess what conclusion the killer's gonna draw? He's gonna think there's some punk out there taking credit for his hard work. And that's really gonna piss him off. I'm with Dr. Nottingham. Captain! 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 Did Brule kill the first two women or not? Mr. Brule had a history of violent sexual behavior. He had the same blood type as that found on all three of the victims, and he fits our profile. Is it true the killer marked his victims with silver spray paint? That's all the information we're giving out at this time. How the hell did they get this stuff so fast? Who knows? Maybe the killer leaked it. Is it true the Silver Slayer strangled his first two victims, Captain? Silver Slayer. That's just what a guy needs, a supervillain nickname. So you think he's here? Who knows? Maybe. We're out looking for his next victim. We'd moved from policing to political convenience. Everyone was hoping it would just go away. But three hours later, it was back. Petechial hemorrhaging, five-point ligature marks, semen outside, silver spray paint inside. She was killed 11, possibly 12 hours ago. That's great. So theoretically, Christopher Brule could have killed and dumped this woman before assaulting Joanna Sims. You don't buy that, do you? No, but it's possible. It's what people want to believe. What are these, burn marks? New twist. Tiny cuts on each palm where he inserted some sort of device, probably a wire, and pushed it into the tendon. Sadistic son of a bitch tortured her with electricity. You ever hear of the Hillside Stranglers? Back in the mid-70s, Anthony Bono and Kenneth Bianchi tortured, murdered, raped girls in and around the Hollywood area. Yeah, I saw the movie. First couple of victims were working girls. One was tortured with electricity. Copycat. Ninety thousand pages, detective. Two hundred and seventy-three boxes on the Hillside Stranger case. Good point. Get a cart. How are we going to sort through two hundred and seventy-three boxes and carry on an investigation? We're going to get some help. You ever hear of Jimmy McFarlane? I was in kindergarten in nineteen seventy-eight. How you ever became a detective this young is still a mystery to me. Yeah, well, I want my milk and cookies. So if you can tell me about McFarlane before nap time. It was McFarlane. And he was one of the lead detectives on the Hillside Strangler case. Last I heard, he was still in town. Detective McFarlane. A uh, retired Detective McFarlane. I'm just Jimmy now on the back nine. Thanks for coming. It's my partner, Frank Smith. Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, you need a hand there, Detective Smith? No, no, he's a good youngster. <laughs> so what makes you think you got a copycat? Rape, torture, strangulation. High point ligature marks. And our third victim had burn marks on her hands from electrocution. My third vic was 21. Bianchi and Bono stuck wires in the Palmer's longest tendon of the left hand, the ulnar nerve of the right. It's amazing that after 25 years, you still remember that kind of detail. <laughs> Unfortunately, I remember all the details. Faces stay with you. And the parents. Two depraved little perverts had a whole city trembling with fear. One of whom is still alive. Yeah, watching Oprah and eating three squares a day, it makes me sick. These are the crime scene photos for our third victim. Palmer's longus on the left, ulnar nerve on the right. That's remarkable. I'm thinking too remarkable. No way you got that kind of detail from the public record. I know I made the public record. To know exactly where to insert those wires, he had to get hold of sealed evidence. Question is how? 
Gregor, I want the names of all the people who checked out evidence on the Hillside Stranglers over the last year. Done. Maybe we're gonna hubble. I want you to search the net and see if anybody's been buying and selling Bianchi memorabilia. What about Buono? Buono died. It's a tragedy. Luttrell, I want you to call Walla Walla, get the names of all the people from L.A. who visited Bianchi over the last year. You got it. And then check them out thoroughly. And while you're at it, talk to the warden and see if Bianchi will talk to us. Oh, uh, Gregor, one more thing. Mm -hmm. After you check the logbook, get an inventory. See that no evidence has gone missing or unaccounted for. How many boxes? 273. Uh, let's go, let's go. We appreciate you uh, packing this task force. Hey. Any good captain believes in her detectives and covers her ass. But aside from the burn marks, tell me, is there anything, anything solid that links this killer to the hillside stranglers? How long have you been married, Captain? <laughs> I said solid, Joe, not irrelevant. Indulge me. This better be good. 27 years. The hillside stranglers started killing in 1978. That's exactly a quarter century ago. Your point? What did Carl give you for your 25th wedding anniversary? Tennis bracelet, 25th is silver. Silver spray paint, silver anniversary. Our killer is celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Hillside Strangler murders. And, you know, knowing his motivation gives us a shot at knowing what his next move could be. Joe. Unless he already made it. Detective, I think you might want to see this. killer wants you to take that picture. He wants you to shove it in everybody's face, show him how clever he can be. But don't take that picture. Don't do anything this bastard wants you to. Hey, it's the man's job. Take the shot. Don't let me see it on the front page of the Times. It's spray paint this time. Guess that we wouldn't miss it. Body's still warm, puts a TOD probably around 2.30. Brulee died around 9, so that officially wipes him off the list. Exactly. Our guy killed this woman this way to let everyone know that he's the Silver Slayer, not that degenerate Brulee. He took a hell of a risk, dumping the body in broad daylight, taking the time to align her with downtown. Calculated the odds. He figured if he's going to take a risk, make it pay off big time. He's loving it. Well, the Hillside Stranglers killed 10. We have four. Six more to catch up. Call the warden at Walla Walla. Bianchi refuses to meet with anyone from law enforcement. He's only giving visitation rights to his harem. Harem? Night Stalker, Charlie Manson, they've all got their bevy of female admirers. I don't understand those women any better than you do. The trail's on his way in right now from interviewing one of Bianchi's fans. Anything more than the usual nutcases? Letters, emails, tips from all over the city are flooding in. Paranoia level's rising. Any minute now, old men in wheelchairs are gonna be blowing the heads off of Meals on Wheels volunteers. Women will be turning in their ex-boyfriends and husbands. The Hillside Stranglers weren't caught for months. That can't happen. See how Latrell's visit went. David Berkman would sell portrait to son of Sam, 750 bucks. What about Ted Bundy's car keys for 1250 Frank, you want Charlie Manson's autograph for only $750? No, just the Hillside printouts, please. Imagine the kind of whack jobs that buy this stuff. Hopefully our killer's one of them. What's the word? Latrell interviewed a woman that flew up to see Bianchi six times last year. Evidently broke, she hinted a third party might be picking up the tab. Well, did Latrell get the name on the third party? She wouldn't say. Maybe he didn't try hard enough. We did our due diligence on Bianchi's paramour, Alice Carrion, resident of Beaulieu Terrace, city of industry. No Beaulieu, no Terrace. LAPD, we have a few questions. You know, Anthony kept bunnies. Love the little guys like I do. Isn't that right, Jeffrey D? You never visited Anthony Buono, just uh, Kenneth Bianchi. Tony refused to see me, kind of antisocial. But not Kenny? No. Kenny loves visitors, likes to read his poetry. He is very, very sensitive, yes. You went and visited him six times in the last year for nursery rhymes? No, because I love him. Kenny's my little mush ball. But there are other men you love, too. Isn't that right, Alice? You, men you married and never bothered to divorce. Richard Tyler Richard, sexual sadist. Bert Owen Kramer, murdering pedophile. Harrison Newton Jr., carjacking necrophiliac. Polygamy is against the law in the state of California. One year in prison, $10,000 fine for each marriage. <laughs> Nobody prosecutes polygamy. Well, we're always looking for a new challenge. So more jail time. Animal control will come in. We have to have these cute little fur balls euthanized. What? So sad. You guys are real jerks, you know that? Who pays you to go to Walla Walla? 
He's going to be angry with me if I tell you. Not as angry as J.D. when the gas comes on. Richard, Mom. Yes. I'm Detective Friday. This is Detective Smith. LAPD, robbery, homicide. Got a minute? Uh, robbery, homicide. What do you want with me? Richard, do us all a favor. Put some clothes on. Why would you spend a couple thousand bucks flying Alice Carey and up to see Kenneth Bianchi? She tells me what he talks about and how he is. That's all. And you care. Why does that bother me? Detective, I have a very unusual hobby. I'm into serial killers. I don't deny it. Be careful with that, please. It's very delicate. Let me guess. A remnant of a pillowcase used by the Night Stalker to smother one of his victims. Very good, detective. I like talking to cops. Hey, don't. Please, stop it. Shame on you. Where were you Thursday night, Richard, between 11 and 4? Am I a suspect in the Silver Slayer murders? No, no, no. You're not a suspect. You're the suspect. Oh, my gosh. This is too good. Where were you? I was here watching the True Crime channel, like I always do. Any way you can verify that? Look. I'm excited that you think I may have committed the Silver Slayer murders. Really, I am. But you're barking up the wrong tree. The Silver Slayer rapes his victims, correct? You even have traces of his actual sperm found outside the genitalia, not in. Well, watch this. You're going to like this. It's a forensic alibi. You see the scar? My prostate. The thing was the size of a cabbage roll. So, I, uh, I can't get it up. I can't even ejaculate. Couldn't be me, could it? It's one hell of an alibi. Just out of curiosity, where did you get this piece of pillowcase? A dealer. A dealer? Man have a name? Yes, it uh, was um, Harold Sorensen, with an E. But he's long gone there. Uh, died in 94. Any idea where Harold got his merchandise? I believe he had an excellent source in the police archives. But that was 10 years ago. I checked 96 boxes against the logbook. There was a boatload of evidence from the Strangler case missing, dating all the way back to the early 80s. Veteran clerks, ones who have been here over 20 years. How many are there? Two. Interviewed both. They allowed their homes to be searched. Nothing. How about clerks who've retired? Record search yielded 16 names, but only one stood out, Lydia Stoffel, an employee of the Hall of Records for 19 years who continuously checked out files, but only on serial murder cases. One thing for sure, she didn't buy this house on a property clerk's salary. You quit the Hall of Records a year before your pension vested. That may sound odd to someone who's never worked at the Hall of Records for those of us who have. Come on, Lydia. After all of those years of stealing evidence, eventually someone was going to catch on. What the hell are you talking about? You quit because you knew you'd be caught. I was sick of working in a dungeon, schlepping banker's boxes around, and I developed an allergy to mold. Here we go again. Gold arches? Yeah. What? You arch your eyebrows before you fabricate answers. It's a classic tell. It's in all the textbooks. Normally, we'd let you spin a yarn or two, but we're in a hurry. There's a serial killer out there right now hunting down young women. Victims, like your daughter here. That's my son. I want the names of people you've been selling evidence to. All right, so we'll get a warrant, which is going to take time, and that's really going to piss us off. Not a good thing, Lydia. If we get a hit on one of your customers, we're charging you with accessory to murder. Murders. Multiple murders. Murders? Got it. But that old stuff was just rotting away. Names and evidence you sold now. She sold to over 400 customers and had boxes of evidence still in the basement. 400? We're going through all of them one by one. Captain, got the call from forensics. No prints on the letter other than the victim's. Letter? Reportedly from a victim. Black pins are where the hillside stranglers abducted their victims. It's slightly irregular circle. The red pins are where we think our copycat abducted his victims. Now, if he follows this pattern, he'll complete this circle clockwise like the stranglers. Moving east, which takes us into Boyle Heights and Monterey Park. That's a couple hundred thousand people. If our man's true to form, his next victims will be kids. 
uh, two girls between the ages of 12 and 14 abducted together. Kids. So let's concentrate on malls, parks, and schools. Word's already out there. Captain, it's on. Experts have verified the handwriting on the letter which arrived at our news desk today does in fact belong to Deborah Gascon, the second victim of the Silver Slayer. The 25-year-old Gascon was raped, tortured, and strangled. She was also marked by the Slayer's signature calling card, Silver Spray Paint. A copy of the letter reads, and I quote, Dear Kyle, Mommy is about to go away, and I just wanted you to know that I love you very, very much. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. Detective, Please be a good boy. And you wanted any Marshall. missing children reports that came in? That's right. God knows I don't want to leave you, but I have no choice. Sisters 11 and 14 didn't come home from school. Dispatcher got mother's call at 7.22. Where? Monterey Park. So Susan gets out of school at 3.15, Jennifer 3.30. They worked together to Montreal Music Academy for lessons. We spoke to their piano teacher. He said our daughters left around 5 o'clock. You will not be here unless something bad happened. You tell me, Silver Slayer, he take my girls. We certainly hope not, Mrs. Kimura. Now, do your daughters go anywhere on their way back home from music school? No, they come straight home. They never talk to strangers. We told them never talk. We just got to hit off Mr. Kimura's American Express card. We're going for the girls in case of emergency. 447 Hot Topics, Monterey Hills Mall, $31.25. That's on their way home. Go. They're there buying some tchotchkes in the mall. Leaving. Leaving, coming out here. Fast forward. Fast forward. Keep going. Here they are, here they are, here they are. Coming down the elevator. Fast forward. Play camera five. Here they are here. Coming out into the, the lobby. That means some friends. They're gonna yammer for a little bit. Just fast forward. Fast forward it all the way to the exit, okay? There they are. Up on the top of ten. Exiting the mall. Exiting. Nothing happens. Jeez. Run it again. Play it again from the beginning. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Is, is there another camera of their exit? Camera 18. Pretty far away. Run that one. There. 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 Zoom in. Zoom in. Enhance it. Is that a guy or a girl? I don't know, a guy with a ponytail? Look at, the, look at their body language. Freeze frame. It's like they know the guy. Guy who looks like a girl. Where have I heard that? The picture on the piano. We spoke to Lydia Stoffel in lockup. Said her son Brett was an aspiring virtuoso who earned his keep playing piano in upscale malls. Where are the girls? What girls? Jennifer and Sandra Kimura. Don't play games. I don't know any Kimuras. Ouch, you're cutting off my circulation. You know all about cutting off circulation, wouldn't you? Please, I make my living with my hands. You were seen on tape abducting Jennifer and Sandra from the Monterey Hills Mall. Now, if they're alive, if you help us find them, you have a chance at life. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not feeling so well. Well, you're not going to feel any better unless you tell us where they are. I swear, my head's killing me. I get migraines. Brett, where are they? I don't remember anything. Come. I'm sick of this. Hey. You don't fool me, you son of a bitch. You talk or you'll never talk again. Tell me where they are! Come on, Joe. Joe, take it easy. Come on. Joe. All right. I'm good, all right. Call paramedics. The Academy Award goes to... Showtime's over. You're under arrest for murder. My guess is that Brett probably spent a lot of time in his mother's basement examining serial killer paraphernalia, getting aroused by it, probably masturbating over it. That's more information than we need to know. Just that it's easy to see how he began to connect sex and violence 
The Monterey Music Academy. He was a part-time instructor. That's why the girls weren't afraid of him. I knew him. I checked the neighbors. Same old, same old. Brett was a nice young guy. Kept to himself, always real polite. A lot of diplomas, just like Bianchi. His were fake, too. That's incredible. I can't find a single print. He must have scrubbed this place clean on a daily basis. It's Anthony Bourne. We did his research. In any case, this isn't where he would have done his killing. Yeah, but there's got to be something in here that's going to tell us where those girls are. Who are these people? Great pianists. This klutz with Zerwalski? I don't think so. Given this guy's M.O., you really think the girls are still alive? They're alive. He'd take his time. He would enjoy it. His father. He was ashamed of him. He wanted him to be a musical luminary, just like his heroes. You want to check on this guy? Yeah, Paul Stoffel. Died three months ago, cirrhosis of the liver. Supposedly, his wife and kid hadn't seen him for years. Death of a father, even an absent one, could have set him off. Where does Paul Stoffel live? Out in commerce near the casino. Well, what did he rent or own? He owned. So there could be an empty house, one that Brett inherited. Here they are. Everything's gonna be fine. All right, we're police officers. We're here to help you. We're gonna get you out of here. We're gonna get you your mother and father. All right? You okay? It's all right. I'll take these wraps off. It's okay. It's all right. All right, okay, let's get out of here. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's go. All right, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Thanks for coming. I didn't think you'd show up. You're invited. It's an obligation. You may have information that's useful. And that's something I'd pass on to trained professionals. You believe they have me on suicide watch? I've never felt better. Except for the headaches. We've read the book, Brett. Headaches, amnesia, schizophrenia, multiple personalities, insanity plea. Insanity plea. I'm not insane. Am I? What's the matter, Brett? Lonely? Miss your mommy. I just wanted to thank the people responsible for turning me into a celebrity. They won't let me see it, but I know I'm all over the news. What I find ironic, this attention-craving, psychopathic narcissist is gonna spend the rest of his life in solitary confinement. The rest of what life? They'll strap Brad here down, inject him full of sodium, potassium? No, Pavillon comes first, paralyzing agent. Right. Man, that's gotta be awful, being paralyzed and knowing your heart's about to explode. Yeah, 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 like my victims. But they're not going to kill me. I'm going to sit on death row, read my fan mail, and greet the ladies at visiting time. Officer, in L.A., a city that worships celebrity like no other in the world, homicide is a guaranteed shortcut to fame. 
The fact that there aren't more freaks like Brett Stoffel is kind of amazing. If you think about it, almost comforting. Stoffel was convicted by a jury of his peers on four out of four counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances, two counts of kidnapping and molestation of minors. The judge sentenced him to die by lethal injection. In California, an appeal in capital cases is automatic. 